بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله we are still continuing on our chapter four of our book was Islamic psychology a transcendent model to achieve peace happiness and success and we are still discussing on the subtopic of potential opportunity and success in life eh so today I'm going to give you uh, this whole idea of uh, nurture versus uh, nature versus nurture debate uh, in terms of success in life, uh, and what are the new sciences of epigenetics that can actually help us to understand this whole nature of our existence. But I would like to read back the last paragraph that I read before in the previous uh, recording. The human conception of perfection is so limited because our understanding of perfection has been conditioned by our, experience, our experiences as material being inhibiting a, in a physical universe. Human beings are only beginning to conceptualize that which exists beyond the material plane. All that exists on the material plane is less than the tiniest part of that which exists beyond the material plane. We certainly have much to look forward to and I pray we don't squander on this sublime opportunity. And this I'm going to explain to you in relation to this understanding of the new science epigenetics also. Eh? It is obvious that virtually all characteristics of human beings have been developed by interactions with the environment rather than having their origin in the expression of the genetic information carried out by the chromosomes. So you can see Professor John Jenkins, uh, he, he wrote this something 40 years ago when the science of epigenetics was not even discovered. Where he says there are more to just the, at that time they just discovered the idea of genes. Alright, genetic, uh, the whole idea of genetic is just only about 40 years old. So basically at that time, Francis Crick and their, their friends have discovered this whole uh, idea of DNA. Alright, but what was it then? There have been a long-standing scientific and philosophical debate concerning this matter, which must be called nature versus nurture controversy. Is it natural that you are stupid or is it nurture that, that uh, you become smart? What is it? Or is it nature because you are having uh, psychological problems, anxiety, depression, psychosis, or it is because of nurture that you are having those kind of problems in terms of environmental impact and the uh, intra and social uh, impact that you see in this book. We have our model which I have explained over and over again. So there has been a long-standing scientific and philosophical debate concerning this matter which might be called nature versus nurture controversy. There have been those on the nature side of the debate who have made the claim that virtually all of what we have as we become adult are born with. We are born with our bad genes. We are born with our anxiety. We are born with our depression and so on. And there, are, there have been those who on the nurture side of the debate, who have made the claim that virtually all that we do when we become adults result from our interaction with the environment, whether physical, social, in, intrasocial environment as we grow up. Basically, all this genetic inheritance uh, is the understanding versus what we call conditioning. So, the new science of epigenetics is now proving that the simple idea of our gene controlling our future is proven to be wrong. So, Prof. Mahdi Jenkins was right. Some 40 years ago, he has written this and he is right. Genetic mechanism alone cannot explain how cellular traits are propagated. Lifestyle, experiences and social stresses can influence our success or failure in life. Even the idea of evolution is being challenged by this new science of epigenetics. So, epigenetics now even signed, uh, is now overcoming this whole idea. So, how do a Muslim psychiatrist or psychologist understand this? Because first you must then master the science of epigenetics. I'm not a master of epigenetics, eh? but I'm just giving you some idea of how Japan epigenetics actually uh, define to a certain extent how our DNA, all right? Our DNA is being expressed by our DNA and then the copy is made like a Xerox copy, our RNA. But our DNA structure is, there are this protein expression on the side of every DNA, every strand of DNA, we have various types of protein that is expressing its dominance. So, this protein expression will actually can change the DNA. When it is duplicated by the RNA, the, 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 the copy to build a new strand as we 
our cells die and the new cells is being re replaced this copy that is being made can either be made stronger or weaker by the protein expression so if we have weak genes for example there are those on the genetic side say okay uh, they say addiction is because of your genetics or obesity is because of your genetics anxiety is because of genetics psychosis is etc cancer and so on but they forgot that the expression of all these genes all right is controlled by epigenetics all right so what does you mean by epigenetics the change in your inner thoughts the change in lifestyle the change in your physical environment will actually change the expression of your protein uh, so that your dna when it is replicated it can be either stronger or weaker so when it is brought up in a positive manner in terms of your spiritual emotional mental and physical inner self your lifestyle and your physical environment you actually can overcome this whole idea of a weak gene for example you have a weak gene because of obesity that means you are prone to obesity because uh, this is also in relation to your genetic material that inherited from your father your grandfather your great-grandfather and so on what kind of environment that they are living in so they may be living in depravity so you have this obesity gene but this obesity gene through epigenetics will not be expressed for example if you have a good lifestyle where you exercise then you eat for example uh, vegetables become a vegetarian and you have your inner thought this this thing i'm going to spend a lot of time how epigenetics inner thoughts change your genes all right and you have this physical environment where you have not junk food but healthy wholesome food when your gene your dna is expressed this obesity will then be suppressed and after many many uh, years you don't have any problem of obesity whatsoever so this whole idea that nature controls your destiny is not true what is important is for us as muslim psychologists to understand that nature to a certain extent does have its weak links because of the generation and generation and generation before our genetic material that we inherited from our parents our great grandparents and all the way down to adam alayhi salam but all those expression in terms of psychological problems the anxiety depression psychosis and its related uh, psychological problems can be reduced through the science of epigenetics so psychologists muslim psychologists must understand that we can use epigenetics because the most important factor that express this gene replication your rna replication to become a stronger gene that means you have a weak gene you can replicate and become a stronger gene is by your inner thoughts and this is the most fantastic thing because through religion we have as in our model we have what we call inner speech through inner speech we use our spiritual faculty our roh we use our emotional faculty our cult and we use our mind or mental faculty conscious and subconscious mind and then we have this physical thing that means lifestyle and physical so here we have in terms of these two aspects in terms of the physical but we have the sem so this inner thought as sem at the spiritual emotional and mental level will actually able to override the weak gene and you create a strong gene so your destiny is then controlled your psychology is then controlled by your expression of your inner speech and this is a very far, very important finding so what we need to do is that these are done by researchers in terms of just using inner speech and mindfulness so they now they say if you have mindfulness you reflect you meditate you can have a better gene replication in terms of your rna duplication and you can then reduce your weak genes within your current self all right then the tendency can be override so even though if we have weak genes we can have a fruitful wonderful happy joyful fulfilling life if we know how to control our inner thoughts our lifestyle and our physical environment so if we do all these three things our inner thoughts at the spiritual emotional mental and physical level this physical is taken by lifestyle and physical environment the spiritual emotional mental 
then we can re reduce depression and anxiety. For example, if we have assurance of Allah, if you are a practicing Muslim, you practice this whole idea that Allah tells us in the Quran, in their hearts they have assurance of this world and the assurance of the hereafter. So Allah gives us this assurance. When we have that assurance and that assurance is built up into our ibadah, our inner speech says what? Alhamdulillah, I have assurance of Allah of having the mercy and the protection of Allah. So I'm not worried. I'm not, I'm not anxiety. I'm not having depression. Inshallah, that will reduce your tendency because you may have a gene that gives you the expression of depression and anxiety. That gene will then be diminished. Why? Through the practice of your spiritual, emotional and mental well-being. This is what we call spiritual hygiene, emotional hygiene, mental hygiene. All right? And this is the thing that is coming forward. So, because we have this holistic integration of the self, and through the understanding of the science of epigenetics, Muslim psychiatrists, biologists, psycho psych psychologists can understand that even though there is natural weaknesses in ourselves, if we are nurtured in a positive manner in terms of our spiritual upliftment, our heart, our, our heart, our akal, and our physical jasad, we can then bring about a change of our destiny. So our destiny, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this opportunity. And today, only now when we are, we are talking about the science of epigenetics, they are saying nature is not everything. It is nature and nurture. But nature in its weaknesses can be overcome when you go back to tawakkal ala Allah. This brings back to the whole concept of tawakkal ala Allah. And all these are integrated. Eh? So you can see that when you talk about genetics and the science of biological, human biology, human physiology and so on, there's a lot of role for Muslim scientists to play. So you can do research on epigenetics and then you can see how the link between, for example, obesity, anxiety or depression vis-a-vis -vis how Muslims should practice mindfulness in terms of ibadah, the spiritual, Ubidiyah to Allah. What are the effects eh, in terms of his or her emotional stability, in terms of his or her mental capacity and so on? So all this points to the whole idea of our potential as human beings, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, is so vast. We are only scratching the surface. So because of that, we must understand and realize our destiny eh, is not determined by our genes, but how we combine our fulfillment in life in terms of understanding our genetic material that we inherited and the thoughts that we bring into ourselves, the inner speech, and then the lifestyle and the physical environment that we express the best of our capacity to then have new genetic material through the RNA, DNA replication that we then become a wonderful human being a wonderful Caliph of Allah, always striving to make ourselves good, helping others to be good, making the world good, inshallah.